Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over some skills that you might use to create a newsletter in Microsoft Word. Now there are plenty of Word templates, or I'm sorry, there are plenty of newsletter templates out there available to you, and you might find one that, you know, meets your needs perfectly. But I wanted to uh, demo a couple of uh, skills that you can use in newsletters, and in a lot of other things too. So, in no particular order of importance, I've got a blank document here, but I want to create kind of a mock-up newsletter. And to kind of start off, I'm going to go ahead and apply um, some better margins. So I'm going to head over to the Page Layout tab, Margins, and I'm going to use some narrow margins. That gives me half-inch margin on all four sides. While I'm here, I'll also head over to Page Borders, and let's see, I'll just choose a simple box border, a little rosy color there, increase the thickness, apply it to the whole document, click OK. So now my document actually has a page border. Now for a long time you've probably been using WordArt and that's fantastic so I can head over to the insert ribbon and we've got a number of choices here but over on the right side we can choose some WordArt. So I'm going to go ahead and choose some WordArt and I'll just pick, uh, pick some reflective text here and this can be my newsletter title. Now the interesting thing about um, word art is it's, it's an object. It's, it's almost like inserting a picture in your document. So I've got this newsletter or this, this word art text and I can actually click and drag it and move it around. That's pretty easy. But I can also have my drawing tools format ribbon and I'll choose position and I'll just kind of center it there at the top. So position will allow you to stick it right up there. And if I wanted to I can make it a little bit bigger. Um, let me go ahead and select that text actually and I can use my font size here and I'll just manually type in a font so there we go so now I've got some text a couple other things we might want to do though and let's go ahead and get some publication date information what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my cursor down here a little bit you notice I get my little eye bar cursor and there's a little icon with it what that means is if that's a uh, uh, point method here so if I were to double click I'd get some left aligned text right at this spot notice if I move my cursor roughly in the center here that would be centered text over here I'd be right aligned text I'm gonna double click right about here and now I've got some left aligned text and I can put in um, I don't know how about the uh, the date of publication there we go. Now you notice my the word publication jumped all the way over and that's because my word art text is kind of mixing in there a little bit. So I'm going to go to format. Actually let me just bring that up just a little bit. There we go. That'll make that a little bit easier to look at. So now I have date of publication over here on the left. And I'd like to get some other information over here on the far right side. So I'm going to switch over to a right align tab. A little right tab marker. And I'm going to click on the 7 and drag over. So now I have a right tab all the way over there. So at the same line of date of publication I can press my tab key jumps over to the right and I can go and type in uh, volume number and um, issue number. So if you've got some information about that. Now below this I'd like to put in a borderline so I'm going to go ahead and select this entire paragraph and this is one paragraph in fact if you could triple click one two three and that's one paragraph right there I'll head over to um, actually I can just go to my border tool right here and I could apply a standard bottom border but I can head over to and I can look at more borders and shading and I want to do a border not a page border but a, a border here and let's see I'll choose a slightly thinner border, different color, and I'm only going to apply that to the bottom and I can actually click right here on my little preview or I can click on the bottom border button and that's going to apply this border to the entire paragraph when I click OK there we go so now I've got that border there. I'm going to go ahead and double click again below this border line there we go see I'm going to get left aligned text it's coming along here and I want to have um, some mock text in here so I'm going to use a little trick here I'm going to type a rand function a random function R-A-N-D parentheses and I'll do um, four I don't know four paragraphs with seven sentences each just press enter so now I've got some mock text for my newsletter and these are going to be paragraphs and I think I'll start off by creating a drop cap so 
you've seen drop caps before. Basically, I'm going to select the first letter in this first paragraph. I'll head up to the Insert ribbon, and there's a drop cap option. So I can just click on Drop Cap, and I can choose the style that I want. There we go. So now that first letter is really big. Basically, you could have made this manually, too. This is simply a text box with square wrapping, and the, and the letter is really big. But Word made it a little bit fast and easy for us. Okay, so that takes care of that part. And um, next, I think I'm going to go ahead and split this into columns. So I've got this one big wide column of text, and it's pretty normal for newsletters to have multiple columns, whether it's two columns or three columns, maybe even four if it's going in a landscape frame. Let me zoom out for a bit so we can kind of see things. We won't be able to see my text too clearly, but we'll be able to get a nice overall picture. And I'm going to select all the paragraphs of my text. And I would encourage you to have your text down first with a lot of the formatting taken care of before you switch to columns. I find it easier to work with text once it's one column and then switch over to multiple columns. So I've selected the text that I ultimately want to make into multiple columns. Really easy. I head over to um, Page Layout and I can go to Columns. Oh, it's decent taking that ability away from me there. So let me do it this way. Part of it's going to be that word art issue. Notice if I select my three paragraphs here, I can change to columns, but that drop cap has given me some issue. So let me go back to this. I'm actually going to delete that drop cap and I'll put it in after the fact. So I've taken out that drop cap. Really easy to put back in. Okay, let me go ahead and zoom out again. I'll select all of my paragraphs. By the way, I could have just triple click, hold on third click, one, two, three, hold on three, and then just drag down. That selects the paragraphs also. And I'll take this over to columns, and I'm going to do three columns. So now I've got a nice three column layout. Let me go ahead and zoom back in. Select that first letter O, insert, drop cap. There we go. So now that drop cap is back in there. So now I've got my three column layout. Pretty easy to work with. Um, let's see, what's next? I'm going to go ahead and put in, um, I want to put a shape or something in between these two columns so the text kind of wraps around it. Really easy to do. Uh, I'm on the insert ribbon already, and I have a number of choices here. I could do some clip art, certainly. I could do some smart art. That's, that works. I'll try just inserting some clip art. The last thing I searched for was moon. I will search for um, monkey. Okay, and I'll just take this monkey, drag it right on there. Now that I've got a clip art or any kind of image, I can go ahead and double click this. And when I double click this image, it activates the format ribbon for that particular picture. I'm going to change the wrap text over to square. Okay, and I'm going to move this pretty much, and let me resize it a bit so we can kind of see what's going on here. So notice with square wrapping, my text is very smooth. It literally treats this image as a square. Compare that, though, if I change the wrap text over to tight. See the difference here? Square wrapping, it treats the image as a square. Tight wrapping, it treats the image. It really looks at the actual image. Now, you can't do tight wrapping with everything. So if you were just to take a picture off of your um, camera or you know off your computer or JPEG file, you wouldn't be able to do tight wrapping with that. It wouldn't look any different than square. But you can do it with some clip art. So now I've got tight wrapping around this particular graphic. Okay, I can close my clip art box there. So things are looking really well here. And let's see, uh, uh, something else I want to show you is basically I want to take this one paragraph over here Okay, so I've selected this one paragraph. Once again, I could have triple clicked. One, two, three. Selects the entire paragraph. And I'm going to head over to Borders and Shading. And I'm going to do a thinner border. It's dark blue. And I'm just going to apply it to the left. So now this one paragraph has its own border. Okay, so let me zoom out so we can kind of see things a little bit better. And I did start to spill over into another page, so let me just kind of delete some of my content so it all kind of fits on here. I just had fake content anyway. And this is my basic newsletter. So I've got some word art. I'm using some tabs, borders, columns, drop cap, 
and page border. So it doesn't really take a lot of time and effort to make a decent looking, news, a decent looking newsletter. And certainly this could be jazzed up with some more graphics, you know, a few pictures in some of the columns. Um, perhaps the word art should be slightly bigger in scale, uh, considering the amount of text on here. Or this could be jumped over to number two, multiple pages. And obviously, if you're doing multiple pages, then you might start to experiment with using page numbers. And some newsletters that are multiple pages will even have a little table of contents on that first page.